Hello. So today we're gonna read Catching the Moon. Catching the Moon, the story of a young girl's baseball dream. Marcinia Lyle loved baseball. She loved the powdery taste of dust clouds as she slid through them. She loved the way the sun heated her hair as she crouched in the outfield, waiting for fly balls. And she loved the sting in her palm as a baseball slammed into it, right, up, right before tugging a runner out. If there was anything in the world better than baseball, Marcinia didn't know what it was. She dreamed of growing up to be a professional ball player so she could play all the time. I wish I knew why you liked baseball so much, Mama sighed as she gently washed Marcinia's hair. Marcinia shrugged. Mama often questioned Marcinia's interest in baseball, particularly when, wish when washing filled dirt from her hair. It's just fun, Marcinia said, giving her mother the same response she always did. Playing dolls is fun, Mama said. Marcinia blew a puff of leather from her palm. Not as much fun as baseball. After Marcinia crawled into bed, Papa appeared in the doorway. What did you learn in school today? He asked. Mm, Marcinia thought for a moment. Some history? Papa crossed his arms. And how did your team do it in the game after school? Harold got a triple in his first at bat and couldn't strike out two runners, Marcinia said eagerly. I struck out my first time at bat, but then I caught a deep fly ball and would have scored the tying round for the other team if I would have missed it. We won 11-10. Marcinia's smile gleamed like the, non, like the noonday sun as she shared the details of her victory. We won the game, Marcinia said one more and you also ripped another dress, Papa said, this made. Then he kissed Marcinia's cheek and turned off the light, leaving her alone with moonlight and shadows and her dream of becoming a baseball player. The tiny house was still. Marcinia could almost hear her mother's noodle and thread moving through the fabric as she sat at the kitchen table mending Marcinia's dress. After a while, Marcinia heard Papa's voice. I wish she would think about school as much as she thinks about baseball. She wants to be a ball player when she grows up, Mama said with a sad chuckle. I just want her to be happy. She'll be what every other girl in this neighborhood will be, Papa grumbled. A teacher, a nurse, or a maid. Mama said softly. I'm going to score three runs tomorrow, Marcinia promised, the darkness as she clapped her hands over her ears. I'm going to hit a home run too. The next day after school, Marcinia went to the playground. The other girls stayed on the hardtop to play hopscotch, jump rope, or jacks. The boys were huddled at the mound, talking quietly. They cast excited glances at a man who was watching the field from the bleachers. Do you know who is he? Carl asked Marcinia as she joined the group. He tipped his head toward the man. That there is, that there is Mr. Gabby Street. He's running a baseball day camp this summer. Marcinia no knew about Gabby Street. He was the manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. He had led the, his Cardinals to a National League per, pennant in 1930. And the Cardinals had topped that the next year by winning the 1931 World Series. What's he want? Marcinia asked. Kids for his baseball camp, Harold said. He's going to be right here on the field every day, except Sundays. Sundays are game days. What is the cost? Marcinia asked. 
It's free, said Clarence. All you need is your own glove. And baseball cards, Harold added. Marcinia could hardly contain her excitement. She would do anything to be one of the players in Mr. Street's camp. That afternoon, Marcinia played with a purpose. She scooped grounders, catching them into her body to make sure they didn't bounce away. She slid into second, keeping low so she wouldn't be tapped. She kept her eyes on each pitch, waiting for a good one to send over the fence. She scored three runs and hit a homer. When Mr. Street approached the players after the game, Marcina crowded in close so he could see her. I just saw some good balls, Mr. Street said, smiling. Who wants to come to my baseball camp and really learn to play this game? Every hand went up. Mr. Street shook them all. He shook Marcinia's hands last. You've got a good arm, little miss, and you run fast, he said. But I don't take girls to the camp. Marcinia looked down so no one would see her disappointment. She began striking dust from her dress. Marcinia best playing ball with us since we were little kids, Harold told Mr. Street. She's the only player we got who ever steals bases, Karen said. Marcinia was pleased that her friends had come to her defense. But Mr. Street didn't change his mind as she walked home. She thought about how these very same boys had teased her when she first started playing baseball with them. Then, when they saw she could run, hit, and throw as well as they could, the teasing stopped. They had let her play. Marcina decided to give Mr. Street a reason to change his mind. Every day Marcinia played baseball, and every day Mr. Street refused to invite her to his, to his camp. Then came a day when Marcinia got tired of hearing him say, I don't take girls in my camp. That day, when she was on third base in the ninth inning of a tie game, Marcinia decided to take the biggest chance in baseball. She decided to steal home. When the pitcher drew back his arm to throw the ball to Harold, Marcinia launched into motion. The catcher snared the pitch in his glove and ran toward Marcinia to check her out. Marcinia doubled back toward third when the catcher threw the ball back to the third baseman. Marcinia turned and, bol and bolted toward home plate. As the ball sailed above her head, Marcinia pumped her arms and knees harder. With the ball spinning towards home, Marcinia dropped her weight and slid into a home plate. She had a stolen home and scored a winning run. While her teammates celebrated their victory, Marcinia planted her hands on her hips and faced Mr. Street. I am a baseball player, she said. I want to learn to play this game as well as I can. May I come to your camp? Well, little miss, if you can stay home, you can probably do anything you set your mind to, Mr. Street said. You can come to my camp as long as you have the equipment. When Marcinia told her parents the good news about the camp that evening, her father was not pleased. I don't like you acting like such a tomboy, he said with a snap of his evening paper. Besides, you know we don't have money to spend on... The camp is free, Marcinia said excitedly. Equipment isn't free, Papa said. I have a glove, Marcinia said. Harold gave me his old one. You'll need clothes, and we don't have money for those, Papa added. So unless you're prepared to get them yourself, I think you'll have to forget about that camp. With another snap of Papa's newspaper, Marcinia felt her dream moved out of reach. Mr. Street was at the field the next time Marcinia played. Before the game, she mustered all her strength to keep from crying. Mr. Street, she said, I can't come to your camp. I don't have clothes, and my father says we can't afford them. But thank you for inviting me. Although she was sad, Marcinia played as well as she always had. I, she loved baseball too much not to play with all her heart.
that night, unable to sleep, Martinia gazed through her window at the full moon, glowing in the sky. It was so run and bright, like a brand new baseball. She reached to the floor and took up her baseball. She put it on and punched the pocket, as if the moon would drop into it like so many fireballs had before. Marcinia wondered sadly if Papa was right. Maybe they'll, girls didn't grow up to be ball players after all, but playing baseball was her dream, and Marcinia couldn't imagine doing anything else. The next day after school, Marcinia was the first one at playing field. Mr. Street was already there and he waved Marcinia, Marcinia over. You're a good player, Marcinia, he said. I want good ball players for my camp. He handed Marcinia a box and he watched her as she opened it. Her eyes widened as she pulled out the shoe with each hand. These weren't just any shoes, they, these were real baseball clubs. Thank you, Mr. Street. Marcinia was so excited she could barely squeeze out the words. She hugged her shoes to her chest. They were even better than a stealing home. Don't you have a game to play? Mr. Street said, nodding toward the field. Yes, I do. Marcinia replied happily. Her fingers flew as they unbuckled. Her street shoes unlaced on her new clothes. They fit perfectly. She ran in them. She jumped in them. She caught and slid in them and she hit a home run in them. After the, game, after the game, the boys rushed to Mr. Street, talking over one another about the game. Marcinia lingered at home plate. She, started, she stared at her feet, proud of the new scarves and smudges on her shoes. They had been a little stiff at first, but now that she had played on them, a good game of baseball in them, the cleats were exactly the way she wanted them to be. Mr. Street excused himself from, from the crowd of the boys. I look forward to seeing you in the camp, he said to Marcinia. He gave him a, he, she gave him a hopeful smile, but Marcinia knew she still had one more person to convince before she could officially accept Mr. Street's invitation. She ran home and waited anxiously for her father to return from work. As soon as her father arrived, Marcinia showed him her new clothes. Now, Marcinia, where did you get these shoes? Papa asked sternly. Mr. Street gave them to me, Marcinia said. He wants me to come to his baseball camp. Papa looked down at Marcinia's baseball clips, which were already scuffed and dusted with field dirt. You must be a pretty good ball player for an important man like Mr. Street to buy you those shoes, he admitted. Then he smiled. You know I don't like the charity, but I reckon we can't give those shoes back in this state. I have to thank Mr. Street for his generosity when I take you down to the baseball camp. Marcinia could hardly believe her ears. Papa had agreed. Her chest filled with joy and she threw her arms around her father, hugging him hard. We'll see how good I am, she cried. Marcinia felt as proud and happy as if she had reached right up in the sky and got the moon in her glove. She was on her way to becoming a real baseball player. She would make her dream come true. the world. Marcinia Lyle never lost her passion for baseball or her dream for playing professionally. In 1937, at the age of 16, she began her career as a pitcher for the Twin Cities Color Giant. From there, she moved to the semi-professional and minor league Negro teams, including the San Francisco Sea Lions and the New Orleans Creoles. As Marcinia's playing career took off, she changed her name to Tony Stone. The name Marcinia was just too cute for baseball, she said. In 1953, she was 32 years old. Tony's, Tony's dream of playing professional baseball came through. She signed to play second base for the Negro League Indianapolis Clowns, filling the position vacated by Hank Aaron's move to the major leagues. This made Tony the first female member 
of an all-male professional baseball team. One of the highlights of her career came that same year in an Easter Sunday game in Omaha, Nebraska. Johnny Stone was the only player that day to get a hit of Satchel Page, one of the best pitchers in the history of the sport. No matter how hard she worked to prove she belonged, Tony always felt like the outsider, the woman playing a man's game. I just loved the game, she once said, but they weren't ready for me. So many of them thought it was a disgrace to play with a girl, but my heart was set. And I kept at it. You gotta keep trying. Tony finished her professional career with the Kansas City Monarchs, retiring after the 1954 season. She settled into a married life with her husband, Colonel Aurelius Piscia Alberga, and continued to play recreational base baseball until she was 62 years old. Marcinia Johnny Stone Lyle Alberga died November 2nd, 1996, at the age of 75. She had no children of her own, but today girls and boys play on a field named after her at the Dunning Playground in St. Paul, Minnesota. Johnny Stone was in inducted into the Women's Sports Hall of Fame and is honored in the Women in Baseball exhibit and the Negro League section in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Thank you so much for listening tonight.